I just took the most difficult, the most grueling board exam that I'm ever gonna take in my structural engineering career. It was 16 hours, I studied at least 300 to 400 hours, and the pass rates are around 30 to 40%, going as low as 18%. Compare that to the bar exams for lawyers, which is around a 60% pass rate, the CPA exam for accountants, which is around 50 to 60% pass rate also, and compare that to the medical board exams, which are around an 80 to 90% pass rate. This exam was tough. Hey, I'm Matt Picardle. I'm a licensed professional engineer in California in the US and I engineer buildings, structural engineering. So what is this test that I'm talking about? It's the professional engineer structural exam, also known as the SE exam. It's a specialty board licensing exam for would-be structural engineers in the US. And if you don't know what a structural engineer is, they are the engineers that work with architects to design the skeletal system of the buildings and bridges that we use every day. They make sure they don't fall down when they're being built and when they're finished, and they also make sure that they're still standing during catastrophic events such as heavy winds or even earthquakes. And I'm guessing that's one of the reasons why this exam was so difficult. If structural engineers don't know what they're doing, hundreds of people could die or get injured if a building or bridge collapses. It's a lot of responsibility. Why even take this test? Is it required? In the US, civil engineering or civil structural engineering licensure goes like this. First, you have your FE, your Fundamentals of Engineering exam, which you usually take while you're still in uh, the last couple years of your university. Once you graduate, you get a job, you start working, work for a year or two, then you can get your professional engineering license, your PE license. For the most part, that's where most engineers uh, stop their, their licensure. But if you're in a specialty such as structural engineering and your state requires the SE license, such as California where there's a lot of earthquakes, then you're pretty much obligated to get it if you want to be in the structural engineering industry for pretty much the rest of your career. So what makes this exam so difficult? First of all, there's the format. It's 16 hours. It's two days of testing back to back. In the morning, it's multiple choice. In the afternoon, that's where I think it gets a little more difficult because you're, it's basically an essay problem, an essay engineering problem. What they basically do is they tell you to design a building and they wanna know your procedures, your way of thinking, uh, the equations and how you use the code and how you design buildings. So you're basically being graded by your peers. So you can't just get lucky in the multiple choice. You have to actually know what you're doing and your thinking process and your analysis process has to be uh, acceptable. And it's not so much about the memorization, it's open book. I think a lot of it comes down to knowing the fundamentals of structural engineering. Going back to our fundamental classes like structural analysis, statics, structural dynamics, strength of materials, basically math, physics, and science. And the other big thing is understanding building codes and design procedures. So that last part doesn't seem so bad, but it's a big deal. Interpreting building codes and procedures the best way I can describe it is basically like a legal contract. It's written in English, you read it, you don't understand it, or you think you do, but you need a professional or a lawyer to help you understand what the meanings really are. So for building codes and procedures, it's like that. It's like a legal contract, but now you're gonna add in equations, math, science, and some engineering judgment in there also. Here's an example. Here's a concrete code book. And let's look at this one, concrete breakout strength of anchor in tension. The nominal concrete breakout strength in tension NCB of a single anchor or NCBG of a group of anchors shall not exceed A for a single anchor NCB and give you this long equations with uh, <laughs> a bunch of equations that are equations within equations. Factor psi ECN, psi EDN, psi CN, and psi CPN. Are defined in 17.4.2.4, 17.4.2.5, 17.4.2.6, 17.4.2.7. So they refer you to other code sections, each with their own rules and regulations. So you go to one of them and then you'll find, uh, like I was saying, the equations within the equations. So it's like a wild goose chase just to figure out what the equation is. 
and there's a lot of building codes and code books. These are just some of the code books, the building codes, the wood manual, steel manual, concrete manual, all things that we should technically know for the exam. And you're short on time, so you gotta tab them up. Tabtastic! I use so many tabs. Look at this, I tab the shiitake mushrooms out of these. And another thing that makes it more difficult is that the majority of people that take it are already working as full-time engineers. So you can imagine if you have a family or extracurriculars, you're gonna have to put that all on hold. And yeah, I think that was one of the toughest parts, at least for me. Minimum of three to 400 hours of studying, you have to make those sacrifices. So you kind of feel like a terrible person while you're going through it. Friends and family and coworkers will invite you to an event, even though it's like virtual. You know, you always have to decline and tell them you're studying. Hey Matt, we got a virtual happy hour, can you? Nope, I gotta study. Matt, it's my birthday, can you attend the- Nope, you're dead to me. Matt, your niece is visiting for the weekend. Oh, I can't, I really have to study. Worst uncle ever. So if you have friends, family, or children, give them a notice that you will be hermit crabbing for these next couple months. So how do I really feel about taking this test? You know what? I don't know my results yet, I won't find out probably until December, but I think I did enough to pass. And that's pretty much all I can ask for at this point. But who knows, we'll leave it up to the structural engineering gods to decide my fate. How did I study? There's generally a couple ways that engineers typically study for this. One way is to read all of the code books and try to interpret it yourself. Sounds like a horrible idea, by the way. I know some of you do it, but I'm already taking this 16 hour test. I don't want to punish myself even more. Or what I did is I took a course. What I appreciated about it was they gave us a bunch of summary sheets and example problems and a class schedule. And that was very valuable for me because inside these binders are basically examples and interpretations and simplifications of the code books. A lot more readable, a lot easier to find all these procedures and understand them also. If you're curious, the class I took was AEI. This video isn't sponsored by them or anything. I just had a good experience with them. And was it worth all the hours studying for this exam? Was it worth taking this exam? Yes, for sure it was. You know, I asked myself, is this going to make me a better engineer? By that, I mean, will it better help me protect the public and the people that will be living and using the buildings that I'm designing? Yes. And even though I've been working in the structural engineering industry for a couple of years already, there's still those gaps of knowledge that studying for this exam fills in. And if that can help me better serve my clients, serve the public, and increase the safety of my buildings, then yeah, I say it's definitely worth it. And if you pass it, there's an increased chance of you getting a raise or a promotion. Sold, sign me up. When can I take the test? It's $2,000 to sign up. What the? Anyways, if you've been watching my videos, that's where I've been for these past couple months, studying for that structural engineering licensure exam. But I'm back and I've been getting a lot of questions from you so my next video is going to be about how to get an internship, how to get an entry level job during COVID. I know it's been a lot of trying times for you and uh, some structural engineering firms that you've been trying to you know, apply for. And a lot of people are doing that too. And it's tough during this time. So I found some unconventional ways that I think can help increase your chances of landing that job during this time. That'll be my next video. So make sure to subscribe so you can be informed on when that video comes out. And make sure to smash that like button. It really helps out the YouTube algorithm, which helps support the channel. I'll see you in the next video.